1914 War to End All Wars was neither the war to end all wars, nor was it the easy victory that generals advertise it to be. Armies used outdated tactics, or soldiers on foot or on horseback, charged forward en masse, armed with rifles equipped with long, obsolete bayonets, only to be cut down easily by new weapons like the spray of the machine gun, upgraded old ones like artillery now so large and immobile that they could only be used from far beyond the trenches. Their shells would ravage the mass formations ordered forward by the generals and the safety of headquarters far away. And so, meaningless territory was defended, attacked, surrendered, and bloodied at the cost of millions of lives. The whole world was in arms. Colonialism expanded. Peoples suffered and died. Arbitrary sides were taken for some slight political gain or economic advantage. These were years of despair, a warmonger's dream. But human nature is communal and even in times of war it is not so easily extinguished. And so it came to be that as early as November and throughout December of 1914, all along the Western Front, a spontaneous truce blossomed as young men from every nation defied orders to keep fighting and killing. Bruce Bairnsfeather wrote, I awoke very early and emerged from my dugout into the trench. It was a perfect day, a beautiful cloudless blue sky, the ground hard and white fading off towards the wood in a thin low-lying mist. It was such a day as is invariably depicted by artists. Walking about the trench a little later, we suddenly became aware of the fact that we were seeing a lot of evidences of Germans. Heads were bobbing about and shoving over their parapet in the most reckless way, and as we looked, this phenomenon became more and more pronounced. In less time than it took to tell, half a dozen or so of each of the belligerents were outside their trenches and were advancing towards each other in the no man's land. A strange sight, truly. <laughs> I clambered up and over our parapet and moved out across the field to look. Clad in a muddy suit of khaki and wearing a sheepskin coat and balaclava helmet, I joined the throng about halfway across to the German trenches. This was my first real sight of them at close quarters. Here they were, the actual practical soldiers of the German army. There was not an atom of hate on either side. And yet... While still officially enemies, the common soldiers of rival nations found themselves partaking in a wildcat strike. In the midst of a war declared by forces outside of their control, these two opposing sides were able to talk and play, share gifts, bury and mourn their dead, and act like people, not warriors, once again. We were, we were in the front line, about 300 yards from the Germans, and we had, I, th I think on Christmas Eve, been singing carols and this and that and the other, and the Germans have been doing the same. And we've been shouting at each other, sometimes rude remarks, or often just joking remarks. Eventually, a German said, uh, Tomorrow, you don't shoot, we don't shoot. And the morning came, and we didn't shoot, and they didn't shoot. So, we began to pop our heads over the side, and jump down quickly in case they shot. But they didn't shoot. And then we saw a German standing up, waving his arms, and we didn't shoot, and so on, so... He gradually grew. Despite government efforts to erase the events of the spontaneous peace, word of mouth eventually forced the acknowledgement of the truce in the form of labeling such acts as treasonous. In December of 1915, truces on a more limited basis took place. But in 1916 and beyond, German efforts to reinitiate a temporary peace were rebuffed. To prevent love, peace, and affection from taking place between the two sides, army leaders had written strongly worded letters which warned of consequences of punishments to unit commanders. And so, in one of the great ironies of the 20th century, leaders of war had to actively work to stop peace from breaking out. Slowly the meeting began to disperse, a sort of feeling that the authorities on both sides were not very enthusiastic about this fraternizing seemed to creep across the gathering. We parted, but there was a distinct and friendly understanding that Christmas Day would be left to finish in tranquility. 
The last I saw of this little affair was a vision of one of my machine gunners, who was a bit of an amateur hairdresser in civil life, cutting the unnaturally long hair of a docile German who was patiently kneeling on the ground whilst the automatic clippers crept up the back of his neck. And so, because of the insistence of indifferent leaders, the war continued for four years. It would end only when a global pandemic swept over the world, spread largely by the movement of soldiers. It was called the Spanish flu. Not because it originated in Spain, but because it was only covered by the press in neutral Spain. The rest of Europe, too swept up in its senseless, endless war, censored the news of the pandemic until it could not be ignored by their leaders. A century later, our new leaders haven't learned much. Peace and justice to all of us in the coming year. We survived. Now let's see what we can build from here. <laughs>